if you give me your touch, if you twist me, twist me, on the grave with the moon, I saw the big 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 big, if you give me your, if you twist me, on the grave with the moon, I saw the big 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 big, if you give me your, if you twist me, on the grave on the grave with the moon, I saw the big 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 big, on the big 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 big, in the dead 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 dead, on the grave with the moon. Somebody put your hands together. Give the Lord a shout. Oh yeah. We will do it one more time. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Can I see you bend down? Bend down low. Oh yeah. Bend down low. Oh yeah. Bend down low. On the 40, where are you? Bend down low. Bend down low, low, low. Bend down low, 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 low. Bend down 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 low, low. I saw the big go. In the big go. In the kidney jaw. In the kidney jaw. On the crazy level. I saw the big go. In the kidney jaw. In the kidney jaw. On the crazy level. I saw the big go. In the kidney jaw. In the kidney jaw. In the kidney jaw. On the crazy level, I drop the big, 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 big. In the game, me dog. In the ginger beer. On the crazy level. Hey! Somebody excited, give the Lord a shout! Yeah! You can do better than that. Can you throw your head backwards and give the Lord a shout? Hey! I'm a camera, I'm a camera, I'm a camera. 
Receive our praises. Receive our dance steps. All for you. Everything for you. We give you all the glory. Accept our praise as a sweet smelling savour in your presence. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Please jam those hands together. Welcome somebody at your right and your left. Welcome them to the U40 hangar. The best place you can ever be by 1 p.m. Celebrate Jesus as you take your seat. If you know you're happy, can I hear you give a big shout? Yeah, this is On The 40 Hangout with Pastor George Zuma. My name is Praise Apuara. On behalf of our lead pastor and the co-pastor, George and Manuela Izuma, I welcome you to the U40 Hangout. Remember, 2022 is our covenant year of show mercies. The mercy of God will define you this year. Can I hear a big amen? Whether you're physically present at the headquarters or you're in any satellite church or connected online, you are a family and we want you to know that we love you specially. The U40 Hangout of Gateway Church exists to help you genuinely encounter God and give you a mental shift. Please be intentional and very sensitive to God. Maximize everything in this house for your spiritual growth. Every time we say thank you by testifying of God's goodness, he says take more by multiplying our results. Please go to the right for you and share your testimony or story with the testimony department. Our social media platforms are meant to keep you connect, continually connected to the grace in this house. Please subscribe, like, comment, share all information on Gateway and George Zuma social media platforms. Please download the Gateway Connect app from either Play Store or Apple Store for more information and daily updates. Every church has its vision, mission, values, and culture. So today, let us remind ourselves that when we say, I am gateway, we are saying that we receive the words out of this altar. There are some covenant mantras we repeat daily as gateway people. Number one, I am the best. Can I hear you say that? This thing works. Only good things are permitted in my life. Scream, there shall be no loss. It will end in testimonies. It's time for encounters with our daily devotional, the power seed. Hallelujah. 
Welcome somebody by your left and by your right and tell them welcome to church. Do it with a smile. Do it excited. Hallelujah. My name is Godwin Abi Opusunju and I'm a business developer, but in this house, I serve as the HOD for the light and sound on the U at the U40 church. So if you are here, you like everything you see when the praise is going on, you like the way the light is dancing and you feel like you want to learn, I am open after now. You can meet me at the back there and then we will take you in. Hallelujah. So I am here to take our covenant confession and our power seat. Today is Sunday, 2nd October, and we are taking seat to Hallelujah. Our topic is character, a capital value in, the, in life and destiny. Character, a capital value in life and destiny. Our key text is taken from Matthew 5, from verse 14 to 16, and it says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. Power thoughts. People are impressed by talent. God is impressed by character. This is said by Rick Warren. And so Papa went on to say, character is of capital value in life and destiny. Every believer is meant to be a standard bearer, a road pointer, or a pace setter for his or her generation. You have been designed by God to show the rest of the world how to live. You have been commissioned by God to colonize the world by your godly standards. By the help of the Holy Spirit, you can shine your light for the whole world to see. Hallelujah. There are three steps here that he went on to list and said, how does the Holy Spirit help you to maintain character? Number one, he delivers insights from scriptures that can kill an unholy nature. Number two, he cautions you when you are about to make the wrong decision. And number three, as a sponsor, as as the sponsor of righteousness, he leads you in the path of righteousness. Hallelujah. Lift up your right hand and let's make this prayer together. Oh Lord, oh Lord. fill me with the power of the Holy Spirit. Help me to maintain a positive character and make me a standard bearer in my generation. In Jesus' name. Action point, ask the Holy Spirit to help you build a godly character. Hallelujah. So, it is time for our 2022 covenant confession. And you know how we do it in Gateway. We always do it with our right hands up together. Hallelujah. So let's go together. I want to go. I am in covenant with the almighty God. My God is the I am. He is everything I will ever need him to be. Gateway International Church is my spiritual family. It's my covenant here of sure mercies. Goodness and mercy follow me at all times. Only good things are permitted in my life. My covenant place is at the topmost top. In John chapter 1 verse 12, the Bible declares that those who receive Jesus Christ become the children of God. Therefore, I confess that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is my Savior and Lord. He died for my and rose from the dead. His zoe is in me. His DNA empowers me for greatness. I love him. I believe in him. I will live for him the rest of my life. Again, in Matthew 6, verse 33, the Bible teaches that putting God first brings commanded blessings. And so today, I vow to put God first in everything. I walk in the covenant blessing of tithing, kingdom service, and soul winning. I am holy, I am healthy, happy, and happening. I have favor unlimited. Wealth and riches answer to me. Gates of nations open to me. Powers of darkness submit to me. I am free from sin, sicknesses, curses, poverty, barrenness, witchcraft, premature death, and all evil. The yokes of delay and denial are broken over my life. Nothing good shall be withheld from me. The Bible reveals that appearing before God empowers destiny. Therefore, as I appear before God on this mountain, I declare in agreement with my man of God, Pastor George Izuma, that I am is at work in my life. My sins are forgiven. My strength is renewed. I receive the blessings of God of new level in life. Today, I lay all my burdens and battles on the altar of God. No good thing dies in my hands. I will never be a victim of any form of wickedness. There shall be no loss nor evil reports in my life. I am a beneficiary of sure mercies. Hallelujah. And you know, there is one thing we always say in this church. We will always say that we are the most friendly church in our city. And so now I would like you to take out one minute, look around, look, at, look around and look at anybody you haven't seen before. Go to the person, 
connect with the person, take the person's phone number. Don't do it with the person you brought to church. Stand up, please do it smiling, do it excited. Stand up, go look for somebody, tell the person your name. My name is Godwin Abi Opusunju. I am a business developer. I am a social media manager. I see somebody I want to connect with. You still have a few more seconds. Meet somebody. Tell the person what you do. You never can tell. The person might call you up tomorrow and then give you a business. Praise the Lord. Are you done connecting? No, now. Some persons here did not stand up at all. Like this brother here. You did not stand up. Who did you connect with? I'll come and ask you the person's name. Oh. Who did you connect with? What's his name? Samuel. And what, what does Samuel do? <laughs> you see? This connection is not right. <laughs> they said connect with somebody in one minute. Tell the person what you do. Know what the person does. Take the person's phone number if possible. And outside here, you can meet the person for business. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you as you enjoy the rest of the service. keep fighting voices and my mind is saying I'm not enough every single lie that tells me I will never measure up am I more than just some of every, every high and every low. Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know. Ooh, oh, did you say I am in love when I can't feel a thing? You say I am strong when I think I am weak. And you say I am well when I am fully sure. When I don't belong, oh, you say I am yours. And I believe, I, oh, I And you 
raging inside. In the air, it's wild. Volcanic eruptions of all the times I tried to fix my life myself but failed. Tried to solve one problem but ended up creating ten in its place. Tried to cover up for God when I should be hiding under his wings. In my mind, the EPs of the world's criticism are steadily on repeat. My playlists are filled with them when I should be listening to what God says about me. <laughs> my mind composes its own traps of the reading the things my life should take. I am a reckless musician on life stage. I spend more time rapping than I let God wrap me in his arms. I forget that it takes the sculptor to mold the clay to perfection. Need the verse to beautiful for the world to see. Need wisdom, vision, and purpose in the frame of flesh, blood, and bones. Weave out beauty from an avalanche of ashes. But on days like this, when I remember, I am back here to my maker like the prodigal son giving sense, asking for a reminder of what he says of me. Oh, yes, I do. Sunday, I came for the last service, Thanksgiving service, the last one. So after the service, I rushed out. I didn't want to go home straight because if I go home straight, walking, coming back to the church would be stress for me. So I just decided to go to my brother's place at um, Elepranwa Junction. So on my way, I took a keke from here going to his place. It was not raining in church here, but down there, the rain was so heavy, everywhere was flooded. When I got to the big tree, okay, before getting to big tree, I was, 
my mind was not in the environment where I was seated in the keke. But I know something happened that something brought my conscious, as in brought me back to consciousness. The keke was, the driver was trying to tell a cab driver that um, his door was not properly closed. So as the keke was trying to do that, in between another car and the cab drive, that and the cab, Keke was like swerving. I was like, uh uh, what's this guy trying to do? When the Keke now stopped, and looking at the Keke, you know that he's crabbed Keke. He's not um, one of these Keke that is uh, strong. So at a point, when the Keke swerved, I came back to consciousness. The first thought that came to my mind like, was like, uh, speaking in my mind, like, be careful. If anything happens, you will get hurt. As the voice said that, I came back to consciousness. The, even that thing that happened made me drop where I was supposed to drop. I dropped earlier. But immediately I dropped. Another car came from behind and hit this keke. The keke started tumbling in the flood. As in everywhere. I was like, where I was standing, I was fused to the place I was standing. What I was doing was shouting, blood of Jesus. What was happening? What if I didn't drop? What would have happened? And the place where the keke, the part where I was sitting was squeezed, uh, an iron from the keke broke and pierced in towards my direction where I was sitting. So I say I came to thank God because if I was sitting in that keke and anything happened, it wouldn't have been easy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Everyone rise up. You will see the help of God. Amen. I thought I would hear your amen. amen. Lift your two hands and thank the Lord for a beautiful day. Thank him for the honor to be here. Thank him for the glory of his presence. Thank him for the life of his spirit. I know you are here and I know you have a world. Open your mouth. Shatala drakati akope, rikaki akrahataha, zadia tremo zetelen to lakata, bimbroko soto rikaki akaha, jadia kreto lake porhataha. Can you lift your hands higher than your head and thank the Lord? Open your mouth and bless Him. Adore Him. No one like Jesus. No king like Him. No savior like Him. No master like Him. Open your mouth and you know declare. Somebody shout amen. amen. Lift your voice and say, Father. Father. Young people, can you speak like you're serious? Father. Father. I invite your presence. I invite your presence. To go with me. To go with me. Through this week. Through this week. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I win. I win. By your presence. By your presence. I advance. I advance. By your presence. By your presence. I achieve. I achieve. By your presence. By your presence. I obtain. I obtain. By your presence. I become. I become. By your presence. By your presence. Open your mouth. I'm going to make it even. I win by your presence. I advance by your presence. You are the presence. I'm praying for you this week on Isaiah all through the month on Isaiah chapter 61 to 3. Isaiah 61 to 3. Isaiah 60 from verse 1 to 3. He said, Arise, shine. For your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Do you have your phone? Put on the light and lift it up. As you lift it up, I want you to shout in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm dealing with young people. I think I have to go home and rest. Can you lift your hand and shout in the name of Jesus? In the name of Jesus. My light has come. My light has come. The glory of the Lord. The glory of the is Lord. Is risen upon me. Is risen upon me. Louder in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father. Father. Let your glory. Let your glory. Envelop my life. Envelop my life. Now. Now. Upon your mouth and make it demand for the glory. 
Let the light of God shine upon you. Let the glory of God envelop your life. By this prophetic action, by the mystery of the light and dark, Somebody shall power. Lift your hand above your head. I command your destiny light to begin to shine. I command a new glory rest upon you. In the name of Jesus. Lift it higher and say every mystery, every mystery covering my life, covering my, life, covering my gifting, covering my, gifting, covering my talent, covering my, covering talent, my passion, covering my, covering, passion, my blessing, covering my blessing, covering my blessing. Why we are praying that prayer now? We are going to pray that prayer now. Why we are doing that? If you are here and you are a member of the church and your name is on our database. And this month is your month of birth. Come to the altar. If your name is not in our database, you didn't put it there. Under no circumstance, I don't care how much faith you have, must you come to the altar. If your name is in our database, walk down to the altar. If your name is not there, under no circumstance, no matter who you are, should you come to the altar. This is your month of birth. Walk to the altar. Every other person, lift up your lift up your. Let me hear you speak like thunder. Let heaven hear you. Let earth hear you. Let hell hear you. Say any mystery. Any mystery. Shout it like thunder. Any mystery. Any mystery. Attacking my life. Attacking my trying life. Trying to cover my life. Trying to cover my da, life. Da, 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 da. Three said, King shall come to the brightness of your rising. Amen. I want you to lift that thing. There are some of you here. As you live here today, people that are mega people will come into your circle. Amen. Governors, presidents, Amen. MDs, Amen. leaders of different areas of life. Amen. We become part of your support system. Amen. Lift your hand and say, Let the king come to the brightness. Come to the brightness. Of my rising. Of my rising. Now. Now. Upon your mother's feet. You are not a pastor. You sell it. You are not a calabar. You are so no polebo. You are a calabar. Things will come to the brightness of my rising. Nations will come to the brightness of my rising. Lift up that token in your hand. Father, let this be a mantle of favor. Amen. Anywhere they go with it, let exceptional favor, brilliant favor, Amen. glorious favor Amen. go with them. Amen. Doors open of their own accord. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. This month, Jehovah personally give you a birthday gift. Amen. Let the engagement happen. Let the business increase. Amen. Let the contract be awarded. Amen. Let the job be created. Amen. Let the healing happen. Amen. Let the conception happen. Amen. The Lord make your joy to be full. Amen. 
Use it and wipe your face. I declare today that no tears Amen. and no toiling. Amen. It is done. Get back to your seat. Every other person, lift your two hands. On the authority of you. Can you lift your two hands higher with that light? On the authority of the Lord, I speak over you. That your generation will know you for good. Amen. You have struggled to rise. Now grace to rise is upon you. Amen. December will not pass. Your car will be packed here. Amen. By this time next year, you will have a property in your name. Amen. Business rise. Amen. Career rise. Amen. Visa be granted. Amen. Favor be commanded. Amen. Take it now in the name of Jesus. Amen. The blessing is upon you. Amen. Give him a clap and get seated. It is done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I want to remind every one of you that this month will be a month full of ease. I thought I would hear a better amen. God will show you help in multi dimensions in the precious holy name of Jesus. Say amen like a Christian. Say amen like a Christian. I want you to please, please. I want you to please remember that uh, the aim of the U40 is to prepare you for destiny. Are you with me? Now, through the Sundays, I've been teaching the regular services on God sponsoring your destiny. That's what I did today. Now, please go pick the CD, listen to it, or listen on YouTube and Facebook and catch the principles we talked about. Apply them, they will break through for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Today, I'm going to talk to you very simply on relationship killers. Whether it's in your business, in marriage, in family, in church, in leadership, in friendship, all of these things we key relationships anywhere. And in life, you can't avoid people. You just have to relate with people. And if you are not good with relationship, your life will be very poor. Are you with me? Uh, are you with me? Uh, Dale Carnegie has said that uh, he will pay more for somebody who knows how to relate with people than for somebody who knows how to do a job. He will pay more for somebody who knows how to relate with people than for somebody who knows how to do a job. Because the truth is this, that no matter what job you are meant to do in life, you can't relate well with people, you, that job cannot be done. Huh? That job cannot be done. You won't achieve much. Praise the Lord. So, there are some people that every relationship they begin ends in disaster. <clears throat> some people, they will tell you their relationship don't last long. And those who last long always end in shame and bitterness and anger. And the question is, why? In a Revelation chapter 2 from verse 1 to 5, we're going to come to it back at the end. But let's start with it. Revelation 2, 1 to 5. It says, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, Please, can they get another cheer? Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, This thing saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Next verse, I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience. How thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and has found them liars. And has borne, and has patience. And for my name's sake has labored, and has not fainted. 
these people have all of these characteristics. Are you with me? Uh, are you with me? He said they labor, they have served, they have been patient, they have suffered for me. Look at verse 4. Nevertheless, I have something against you. You have left your first love. Now look at the next verse. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent. Okay, brothers and sisters, will it do us evil if we go back a little? Go back to verse 2. Go back to verse 2. I know thy works. So obviously they are working, right? I'm talking to you. Come on. Yes, they are working. And thy patience. And how that cannot bear them which are evil. And has tried them which are apostles to say the apostles are not. And found them liars. He's talking about these guys. Their discernment. Their intolerance of negativity. Their work. Their patience. Now verse 3, he repeated again some of those things. And has borne. You have been forbearing. You have patience, so You have labored for my name's sake. You have not fainted. He said, but there's something. You have left your first love. Ah, with all these things. Have you noticed that there are sometimes you come to church, you see somebody working very hard in church. Very, very committed. Jumping up and down. Serving in different services. Everything he's doing. And you think that Jesus is going to honor the person. And Jesus said, you are laboring. You are patient. But there is a first love that is gone. Do you know that a relationship can become mechanical? Do you know that you can be relating with somebody and find that the relationship is just mechanics? That the real love has left. Whether it's in marriage or in friendship, please, what I'm saying, is that true? Yes, the relationship is dead, even though it's still there. So anybody that looks at these people, they say, Kai, they are tied with Jesus. And Jesus said, oh yeah, you need to repent to you need to go back to your first works. You see, small, small things kill relationships. And because we are still busy with the mechanics, we don't know it has died. That's why marriages can die and the husband and the wife are not aware until later. When they suddenly find out that they can't bear one another, they just walk away. And believe me, Friendship can die. Career relationship can die. Pastor, assistant pastor can die. Are you with me? Uh, are you with me? And if you are not careful, you wouldn't know when the relationship has changed. What are the things that kill relationships? Are you here? What are these relationship killers? Because if you know them, uh, you say, praise the Lord. Do you know that most diseases are curable? Ah? Huh? Ah? Huh? You see, you hear people say, oh, you can't cure diabetes. If you discover very early when you see that the pre-diabetic stage, you can manage it. Most cancers, if you discover them early, you can cure them. Ah? Huh? Do you know that if somebody slept with somebody or was raped today and a, a, a HIV virus has even entered, if that same hour, within the same 24 hours, the person can go to get to the hospital, the thing can be prevented. Huh? Yes, but many people that caught the disease didn't know that. They were raped and they covered the rape and then finally found out they were having HIV because foolishness, they allowed them. They were in pain. They didn't know. Are you with me? Uh, are you with me? Uh, sorry, ignorance, not foolish. Ignorance didn't allow them. They were in pain. They didn't know. So they didn't know what to do. So no matter what you're going through, you can recover if you handle it at the least stages. 
You see, uh, let me show you how a relationship problem starts. You have a good relationship. You have an impaired relationship, relationship that has one or two issues. Then you have a dysfunctional relationship, relationship that is an autopilot now in different bad directions. You have a toxic relationship and then you have a dead relationship. In your own relationship now, you may just be in a good relationship. And then secondly, suddenly you see an impaired relationship. One or two things happen that make your heart not too good. Are you with me? If you are not careful, it becomes dysfunctional. Things start going wrong, funny, funny, because you are managing the things that make your heart sad in a bad way. Are you with me? So there's a malfunction, a dysfunction in the relationship. And then after some time, it becomes toxic. And then before you know it, it is dead. And if you don't start handling relationships, uh, believe me, by the time relationships have become toxic, it's difficult for it to be recovered. It can still be recovered, but it's very difficult. That's why anytime you're in a relationship, and then be careful the words you use. Be careful the accusations you throw. Be careful the things you do. Because the moment you get to a point where it's getting toxic and starts choking the other person, the person wants out. You're not hearing me. Even in a marriage, the person wants out. Because nobody wants to be, I mean, even you, you are not a mosquito, but you don't like it in a room that has hair talks. Are you a mosquito? Eh? Does share talks kill you? Eh? But do you like a room with share talks? I'm asking you, do you want a room with insecticide? But it doesn't kill you. Why don't you stay there and say, oh, it doesn't kill me, I can breathe it. Now, if you are uncomfortable in a room like that, how do you think mosquito feels? You are not hearing me. <laughs> Can you imagine the horror mosquito goes through when you spread that thing? As you go home now, pity mosquito. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You should know the horror it feels when it comes in. Ah! That flitter in the room. Hey, yeah, I am finished. But you see, don't be in a toxic place. Praise the Lord. Don't let the relationship go from dysfunctional to toxic. While it is impaired, bring it back. Handle it quickly. And it takes a lot of wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. wisdom. So let's look very quickly at some of the things that kill relationship. The first one is unanswered questions and unresolved trauma. Unanswered questions and unresolved trauma. Unanswered questions and unresolved trauma. There are some of you that grew up from backgrounds where you have so many questions unanswered. There are some of you that came from one or two relationships that have unanswered questions. There are some of you that have unresolved and problems. You didn't have closure in different things of your relationship. But now you are proceeding to another relationship. You are going to kill the new relationship. Hello? Uh, hello? You see, do you notice that uh, this happens to majorly young men? That many times you see a young man who was in a relationship and the relationship broke up and then within three months to five months to six months, you see him with another person. Huh? He tells you he has moved on. Please look up here. What I'm saying, does it happen? He tells you he has moved on. Now, the truth is this. He has moved on. But his heart has not moved on. His mind has not moved on. His body, his sex, his hormones have moved on. You are not hearing me. But has not moved on. The things that caused the last relationship to crash has not been resolved. You are not hearing. So he moved on. And then when you don't process a failure, the ability to repeat that failure multiplies. Huh? When you don't process a failure, it multiplies. But young men, because men are not majorly emotional, don't process failures. They just move on. Just put it in the past. 
and said, today we move. Now listen, are you with me? But in the midst of that, the next relationship, the same things they did, the same attitude they carried on, the same way they talk, the same way they relate comes into the... Please, what I'm saying, does it happen? And before you know it, the same mess comes up again. Now for some women, they don't have closure. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. They just have a lot of emotion. But they don't ask questions. And instead of getting to the root of the reasons why the relationship fell, how was my communication? What boundaries did I set? How did I care? What about my life was projected by this relationship? Was I impatient? Was I intolerant? Was I unforgiving? What really happened to me? You analyze A, analyze B. You are not there to criticize yourself and judge yourself, but you are there to get closure, understanding. You are there to gain a little bit of self-awareness before you move on. Because there is no failure on earth that one side and another doesn't have some small, small things they need to adjust. Is anybody hearing me? There's none. I mean, one of the things you need to learn when you read the Bible is learn how God behaves. Can you imagine God did the first experiment called the Old Testament and it didn't work out well? Do you notice how he tweaked the New Testament from law to grace? Are you hearing me? And the approach change, the way he manages things changes. That's wisdom. He had to sit down and analyze it. I told you the first time, Jesus gave the law to Moses. Are you with me? But he wasn't a human being. He was a God. And then he became man. And lived under the law he gave. And found out that being man, no easy hope. No, you're not hearing me. The Bible says he was tempted in all sin, things, yet without sin. Eh? So he said, now come boldly to the throne of grace. He said, this throne is no longer throne of judgment. It's throne of grace because the teacher went to school. They set the exam for teacher. Teacher saw what students see. No, you are not hearing what I'm talking to. And then teacher told him, say, hey, these children, they suffer. Is anybody hearing me? Let me show them a better way. That's why grace doesn't excuse sin. But grace empowers you to live for sin. And gives you a garment of righteousness. Even when you failed. Are you hearing me here? And allows you to grow. Not to be crushed. I want you to know. That anybody that doesn't examine things. And find closure. Doesn't learn and doesn't grow. If you help me, say yes. yes. That's why unanswered questions are, are one of the greatest relationship killers. And then unresolved trauma. Somebody say trauma. trauma. This one, I said unanswered questions are majorly with men. Unresolved trauma, majorly with women. A young man battered your heart, destroyed your trust, treated you like rag. You didn't resolve it, you didn't handle the trauma. You just shook yourself and said, we move. And you move. You stay in church, you sing, you dance, you act as if nothing happened. Because many of you are in church here, relating with other people in church, sleeping together, running up and down, because you didn't submit your relationship under the authority of God. When things go wrong, you can't complain. You can't come and report that somebody was sleeping with you because if you're sleeping with you, you are sleeping with him. It is sleep plus sleep. <laughs> you are not hearing me. He wasn't sleeping with you in the dream. He didn't rape you. Now you undress. Now you open leg. Are you hearing me here? So because of that you are ashamed. But no, you don't need to be ashamed. You need to address it. Am I talking to somebody here? You need to, address, you need to sit down and say, no. This guy treated me terrible. 
This is wrong. Pastor, yes, I messed up. But that's not how to treat somebody. Are you with me? We pray for you. We get over the trauma for you. You walk back into righteousness and then you walk back into a relationship with God. But you make up your mind. Another human being shouldn't be treating me like that. You learn basic things and you begin to transition in life. But know what people do? They are wounded in their emotions up and down. And they just cover it. And what do they do? Another person comes to them and proposes to them. Now, they were dealing with one brother who was dating them and sleeping with them as he would three other persons. Collecting their money. Messing them up. And when they shout, the person shouts at them, cowards them. I'm going to break this relationship. There was no relationship. It was a situation. <laughs> you are not hearing me. There was no relationship. But they stayed in that kind of terror. Now, they get into another person. This is a decent Christian. Who wants to do the will of God? Who wants to take them to the altar? Who wants to honor the woman that they are? You know what they do? They treat you with suspicion. Treat you with anger. Treat you with bitterness. Not based on what you are doing, but based on what somebody has did to them. This is what I'm saying. Does it happen? No trust. Nothing. They never resolve their trauma. Those are relationship killers. Don't treat me based on how somebody has treated you. So whenever you notice that your heart is wrong, that's where there are counselors and prayer warriors and ministers in church to help you get over it. And when we need, think you need professional counsel, we recommend you to that. Sometimes people need it. Do you get me? And get that terrible load off your heart. Because nobody can run with a load. I've told you before, overload, now in the bench chassis. And there are people here who are moving with their bench chassis. This, uh. Have you seen cars like that? Eh? You don't know. Have you been behind a car before? And the car looks like it's, it's going straight and the body is going this way. <laughs> Have you seen that before? That's what it means to bench chassis. And that's what is happening to some of you. Overloaded with all kinds of nonsense. Lift up your right hand. Every overload in your heart, at the sound of my voice, let the Lord clear it. Amen. The second relationship killer is passive aggression and conflict avoidance. Passive aggression and conflict avoidance. You see, there are some people who are very aggressive, but very passively aggressive. You are not hearing. If you have my voice, say yes. If you have my voice, say yes. yes. Do you know? Okay, some of you here came from families where your mother and your father were quarreling. But either your father is a quiet type or your mother is a quiet type. And your father will not shout or scream or quarrel or beat your mother. But he always has a way of making her angry and putting hot coal on her head in a way that when he finishes with her, her head is burning, and yet he has not done anything. You know, you're not hearing. You see, one time when I was talking with my former pastor, I was a young man then, and they made me in charge of a marriage committee. I didn't understand much about our relationships and all of that. So sometimes when people come and report to me, and women are talking, they say that, I said, uh, when that thing was happening, what did you say? Or what did you do? He said, I didn't do anything. If I pastor, I'm telling you before God, I swear, I didn't say a word. I will say, I will get angry. I said, and the husband did that. He said, yes. One day my pastor called me and sat me down. He said, just sit down. He said, a woman, without saying a word, 
has more than 90 things she can do to keep a man uncomfortable. No, you didn't hear me. He said, when you get married, you'll find out that a woman can just be sweeping the house and that sweeping is flogging you. <laughs> you're not hearing me. Just sweeping the house and singing to herself is totally. <laughs> While she's doing that, bullet is passing through your head. Wham, wham. He said, when people tell you they didn't say anything, don't believe them. There are some things attitude says that mouth didn't say. Are you hearing me? Now there are people with passive aggressive behavior. They carry it. If you are like that, you say, uh, I, I didn't do him anything. No, I didn't do him anything. But you did worse. Somebody offended you. You acted as if you forgave. But what you have done in the last one month of your forgiving, it would have been better if you didn't forgive. Have you met people like that before? Please, I'm talking to human beings. Have you met people like that before? What the way the person has treated you, it would have been better if you didn't forgive. It would have been better the person set you down and flog you well, well. So you can know it is over. Are you with me? You know, when we are younger, when we didn't understand grace, anytime we sin and nothing bad has happened, we get worried. They say, make God beat us first too. And this one is keeping quiet. We don't know what he's planning. <laughs> Let it not be doing an exam, God will come. <laughs> Before he gives us zero with two eyes. Are you with me? I told you many years ago, of a man, this is many years ago now. Don't bring it to today. Are you with me? <laughs> this man, the, the wife was traveling to America, was going to the airport. He took the wife, went and dropped at the airport. And they called for boarding. The wife went and boarded. So he drove off. Because, of course, he has boarded so are going to fly. They are finishing the aircraft to fly. He has started coming home. Maybe because he has another agenda. I don't know. So he has left. Started coming home. Unfortunately, while the aircraft was preparing to taxi, the pilot noticed something an anomaly. So he said he won't fly until it's corrected. They tried to correct it and found that it was a major problem. So they said, no, they can't leave today. Ask everybody to disembark. Our guy has gone home. As he was going home, he picked his girlfriend and went to his own house with his girlfriend. That time, there was no phone. It was this zero, not nine not. You know, not nine not. That one that looks as big as a man's hand, you hold like this. If you go to a bar, you hear them carrying it like this. Are you hearing me? The man didn't have a phone then. So he's gone back home. The wife couldn't reach him to tell him the flight was canceled. So the wife took an airport taxi and came back home because she has key, unlocked the door, enter house, everything by forgot. Sister saw them in the bedroom. And she just walked out and closed the door. The man saw the wife. Came out. And she didn't say a word. The girl packed her things and run. She didn't pursue the girl. She went to the kitchen and said, making food for the night. The man said, lie, lie. <laughs> lie. <laughs> he didn't go near the food. <laughs> he didn't go. Let go where? He was expecting her to get angry, make quarrel.
quarrel, shout, not one word. In the night, she actually came to the bedroom and lay down. The man didn't sleep. He was awake until morning. He was awake. Every small thing will check around to see whether she's holding a knife. <laughs> make, make the knock cut my neck on the He waited. I'm not joking, no. The next day, she didn't say what. Just kept quiet. Two days, three days, she, he traveled to go and report himself to his in-laws. <laughs> he called the mother and the father of the girl, sat down with them. He said, this is what I did. He said, but I don't want to die. He said, your daughter has not said anything. I don't know what's going on in her mind. But if I die, is your daughter home? He said, let her do something. Let me know she's angry. <laughs> he said, why are reporting himself to pastor? Reporting himself to everybody. He said, tell her to do something. If she uh, wants me to leave, I'll leave. If, whatever. But it's, since three days, she has not said anything. <laughs> the woman said, what is there to say? brothers and sisters. But you see, there are people like that who will not say anything. But when they kochuku you, <laughs> passive aggression. These people are aggressive, but in a passive way. Are you with me? Okay, let, let me explain to you a little bit about passive aggression. Have you ever met some friends when you are in school that you are praising somebody and they say, ah, he's great, but you know they don't want to criticize what is going on in a direct way. They just want to come from behind and puncture. What I'm saying is that true? That's called passive aggression. And there are a lot of people that carry it in relationships. You have a big breakthrough but you have something happening but if you have that it's a relationship killer am i talking to somebody here and all that is conflict avoidance just like the woman i talked to you about the person doesn't want to face a relation conflict somebody says anything or does something what do you do you don't want to say no my husband my wife my friend no, I don't accept that. You avoid the conflict. You will never say no. Are you with me? Uh, are you with me? Never, never say no. And then deep inside you, you are boiling. Please, people, talk to me. Does it happen? You are boiling. If they take a pot of yam, it won't take 30 minutes. It will be done in your chest. But while you are there, you are shaking your head. No, conflict avoidance is not good. If you are with me, say yes. Are you here? I don't believe in shouting and screaming and quarreling. But I believe that if I'm sitting down and you are saying something that is not okay and we need to talk about it, we should talk about it. If it's not at that moment, at another time. But never be afraid of conflict. It's a relationship killer. Let me tell you how it, why it kills relationship is this. You see, there is so much negative that your heart can handle. You are not with me. If you're here, say yes. Look at it this way. You see, if somebody does something to you, you keep quiet. Does something again, you keep quiet. Does something again, you keep quiet. Does something again, you keep quiet. Something is building up. A day comes... He does something very small and you explode. And people are saying, is it not a small thing? It's not the small thing you are reacting to. It is the build up in your heart. Well, people, do you understand what I'm talking to? That's why conflict and avoidance destroys relationships. That's why you see people, now is, is it this small thing that is breaking the home? Is it this small thing that the woman returned home late in the night or she didn't answer his call when she traveled? Is it the thing that there is some things that have been going on for years? I, I will leave that. Am I talking to somebody here? That's what you need to handle. Don't let it stay. The third one is inadequate communication and stonewalling. 
inadequate communication and stonewalling. There are people. <laughs> hey. There are people who think that they are smart. They don't communicate. They stonewall. Do you know what is a stone? Do you know what it means to stonewall? Ah? Huh? Somebody is asking you a question. You are using different destructive techniques not to answer. Are you with me? You are building walls all around. Making sure that you don't discuss the issue that is there. You are just bluffing and going on. A lot of young women, a lot of young men do that when they believe that a lady is desperate to marry them. So they stonewall, they stonewall, and they stonewall. They don't give adequate communication. They don't explain, they don't handle things. <clears throat> In their mind, I can do it and get away with it. But they forget that the mind of that girl is, let me enter first. I will get a key for him. No, you didn't hear me. So, the man is stonewalling and the girl is taking the nonsense. He will ask about this, uh, yeah, you just bluff her, bluff her, bluff her, and then she just carrying on. And I just moving on. And he doesn't communicate anything about his business, about his family, about his life. He, he has no access to anything happening around him. He's lying, he's cheating, he's, and, and they're just carrying on. The girl, they, she just wants to enter. When she enters, she gets a good key for your ear. Have you had people before complaining? They say, when we are cutting, this girl was so quiet, so nice, so this, so that, and then suddenly she became a tiger. Ah, it was stonewalling that caused it. Are, is anybody hearing my voice here? That's what causes it. She just wanted to enter and sit down. Many of them, when they enter, they don't even start problem the first year. They wait until first picking down. The moment they watch the picking is a boy, they say, I don't come. They say, we have to negotiate now. Suddenly, the man is awake and fire is burning him in the afternoon. <laughs> you are not hearing me. He doesn't know where to turn. All his bluff now, the girl is calling the bluff. He doesn't know. He's asking her question, she won't answer. And he can't do anything. You are going to leave. He will smile. She will smile. And say, well, we're ready. We'll discuss that one. That's what kills a lot of men. Most men who complain that their wife hides things started the hiding. Now, please, is anybody hearing me? Now that you are in a relationship now, please, if you don't want to run into trouble tomorrow, please start with openness now. Openness now we help you with openness later. What you are doing now, thinking is wisdom, we make both of you hide for each other for the rest of your life. And believe me, the hiding you hurt is the hiding of the wife. Those of you that watch me in impact saw the question that came at Asaba of a woman that went to confess to the, her pastor. That her four young boys, four boys born to her husband are not her husband's children. And was asking the man, he will say, how do we resolve this issue now? The husband is busy coming for Thanksgiving in church. First baby, second baby, third baby, fourth baby. Brother, brother, you think you are smart. Hey. May you not enter the hand of a 419 girl. You think you're smart. You think you're smart. <laughs> you think you're smart. Because a lot of men in Nigeria think they are the smartest on earth. I always tell young men when they're playing games, you went to school, she went to school. And when you were in class, she was beating you in class. 
You are not smarter than the girl you are mistreating. You are not. Oh. The girl you think doesn't know anything. You are not smarter than her. Oh. So she can run circles around you. And score with you from behind. <laughs> you score with, without looking in your direction. Just knock it in. Don't think you are smart. Humble yourself and follow God's pattern. God's pattern ends heartache. God's pattern ends shame. Am I talking to somebody? God's pattern brings godliness in your home. Start with openness now. We'll tell you all of this. You think you are smart. One day you'll be on my altar in my office crying. I say, Papa, Papa, you have to do something. <laughs> When men come to my office and the, the man they come, they need and say, Papa, you have to, I know it has happened. <laughs> it has happened. Papa, you have to do something. The third one. Is it the third or fourth one? Huh? So relationship killer is stonewalling. The fourth one, our time is gone, so we've got to close. The fourth one is divergent interests and strange attractions. Divergent interests. Interests that are divergent. You don't have the same interest. It keeps relationship. And strength is attracting you. It keeps relationship. You had a desire. You are going somewhere. And then you began to grow apart. Somebody say grow apart. Uh -uh. Are you... I am more tired than you. Are we still in this business today? I said, you see, do you notice huh, that growing apart is actually easier? You are growing, she's growing, but you are not growing in the same direction. This way is growing this way, this way is growing this way. Do you know that just being growing in business, another person growing in career can grow you apart. Huh? You can be a businessman married to somebody who is a professional in the bank and just the bank job and your business grows both of you apart. Huh? A doctor on call and call and call and call can grow marriage apart. So when we're talking about growing apart, it's not just about uh, something negative. No. You can be doing your life thing and you grow apart because you didn't find a place where you converge. So we call it divergent interest. Somebody say diverge. diverge. You are not converging, you are diverging. So no matter how much you are growing, you should find a place of commonality. Are you hearing me here? The more, if you can't find that, your home is gone. Your relationship is gone. And many times, the place of commonality is in your spiritual life. Because no matter what you are doing, your spiritual life comes at the center. Uh, are you with me? Make it a place of commonality. Before the home, spiritual. You know why spirituality is very important? Because spirituality puts a discipline on you more than any other thing. Uh -uh. Are you here? In Nigeria today, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what people say on social media and what they say in the law court. There is actually no law in Nigeria that bans anybody from having seven wives. Twenty wives. You can have as many as you can afford. Huh? What keeps you from having many is not the law. It's the word of God. What keeps you from cheating is not because your husband is very beautiful or very sexy. You are not hearing. Is anybody hearing? And what keeps you from cheating is not because the man satisfies you every time. What keeps you from cheating is not because the person eh, provides for the house. Uh, the person is, that's not what keeps you from cheating, no. There are wives of great men who cheat, oh. 
Huh? Why is it that you see all these actors and actresses and musicians who are looking very handsome and hawky and has all the money in the world and the world is still celebrating them and their wives cheat on them and their husband sits cheat on them? Does it happen? Uh, so it's not because of all of that. What helps you is your ability to honor the word of God. That's why spirituality should be central to your life. Amen. 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 But in any relationship, make sure that you don't grow apart. Don't. Find commonality. Somebody say commonality. Find, can I say commonality? And please listen. Strange attraction. Somebody say strange attraction. Everybody look up here now. Look up here. Look up here. Everybody look up here. Stop writing. None of you here and no human being on earth can actually handle everything he says he can handle. I can handle it. No shaking is one key to shame and pain in life. There are some people that come close to you. Don't handle it. Tell your partner. Is anybody hearing me? Tell your partner, I can handle it, we cripple you. You will wake up in the morning and say, I couldn't handle it too. <laughs> By then, it is too late. If you have my voice, say yes. yes. By then, it is too late. So please, don't settle on, I can handle it. If there's a strange attraction around your life, talk to somebody. You need it. Don't wait until you fall to talk. Talk to somebody. Uh, if I tell him he's going to get jealous, if I tell him he's going to get jealous, calm down. It's better he's jealous and your home is saved. That he's not jealous and both of you enter into jealousy soup. <laughs> Do you understand me? Uh, do you understand me? Yeah. If I tell him now, he will start behaving funny. He will start behaving. I would rather have him behaving funny, and your children are not in jeopardy. That he's not behaving funny, and you walk out, walk out, walk out, walk out, and then all we see is boom. You are inside the toilet. So talk. And sometimes you, there are some things you cannot share. With your fiancé, you cannot share with your husband, you cannot share with your wife and all of that. You walk to a mature counselor. Not a flippant counselor. A mature counselor. And you see with the counselor. I say, listen. I am having this strange feeling. I need help. Most counselors that can help you at times like that are counselors of your same sex. Not counselors of the opposite sex. You don't go to a male counselor and sit down there and say, see, I've been thinking of sleeping with a man. <laughs> You're not hearing me. <laughs> is, it, is it the way my body they do me? <laughs> the <way> my <laughs> We're going to close in a few minutes. Did you catch what I'm doing? Is, <laughs> is it the way my body they do me? I don't think I can take it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now, which crap they worry? <laughs> Are you still with me? Go to somebody that is of your same sex, somebody that can talk to you based on the person's life. And anybody you go to and you find that the person is not giving you good counsel, you have enough sense to walk away. Don't let anybody on earth affirm what you know is wrong. You're not hearing. The person says, oh, no, don't mind, don't mind, don't mind. I mean, everybody does it now. Don't let anybody on earth affirm what you know is wrong. Have enough sense to know this is wrong. This is right. I, I think I wasted too much time today. 
The fifth thing that destroys relationship is defensive behavior and absence of trust. Defensive behavior and absence of trust. If you are somebody who is always very defensive and there's no trust in your relationships, there's going to be a problem. Every time something comes up, you become very defensive. You are never wrong. You can never say sorry. You will never be caught. In fact, you would rather die than say sorry. Anybody that tells you you did wrong will end up being the one to say sorry. Anybody know people like that? Uh uh. You there here? Eh? Anybody know people like that? That's a relationship killer. Every young person here that has not yet gotten married, learn to say sorry even when you are not wrong. Nigerian young men think that saying sorry removes their manhood. I should tell them a bit. Learn to say sorry. If sorry will remove your manhood, it didn't have before. Learn to say sorry. The fourth, the fifth one. Eh? Sixth one. Okay, so we're almost done. The sixth one that destroys relationship is inordinate passion and lack of boundaries. Inordinate passion and lack of boundaries. There are a lot of young people that have this passion that drives them and they don't understand boundaries. They don't have one or they don't respect one. Please listen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The reason some young men in Nigeria are not in prison is because Nigeria has no legal system. You didn't hear me. Believe me, what people do in this country and are still walking the street, you can't try it in Europe and America. You can't. Even if you are on the bed naked with a lady and you want to jump on her and she says no, you back off. No means no. Please look up here. That's not a joke. That is, if you go to UN, that's what they say. Anywhere you go, there's a debate. That's what they say. No means no. Many people abroad from Africa are in jail for sexual assault because they didn't know that when they were here. They went out with a girlfriend. They're hanging out with a person. They grabbed the person to kiss the person. I said, no. And they didn't understand. They thought it was one of the games they play in Nigeria. So they held you tighter. And the girl picks a phone and says sexual assault. Sexual assault in America and UK and Europe doesn't mean you penetrated the woman. Kissing her in her, in her mouth without permission is called sexual assault. Touching her in any part of her body that is tender without permission is called sexual assault. You are going to jail for that. You are quiet. Are you guys okay? Okay, let, let me, I'm sorry. I think this is going online. I don't want people to misunderstand me. But how many of you know his song? Anybody listen to his song? Many of you know their music. Shout to the Lord or the earth. Is that not his song? song? I mean of the music. You know their pastor? Brian Houston. Huh? He's no longer pastoring. It's actually right now on trial. And it's not because anybody said he raped anybody. What happened from the story, both the woman and his own, was there was a program. And they don't believe in, here we do abstinence from alcohol. But there they say they can control it. So you take red wine, you drink a little and all of that, but just don't get drunk. So they drink. They don't call it anything. They had a meeting and he got drunk and he drank some things and he didn't know he became tipsy. 
And then this girl has been one of her people. He, he held her and tried to kiss her. And the girl said, it was sexual assault. That's the news we have. And right now he has lost his church and is on trial. Now in Nigeria, you'll get away with it. Come, what is anybody hearing? Nobody will even bring it up. But over there, that's not so. I, I'm traveling to UK. You'll be in jail 10 years from now. <laughs> if you don't change your ways. In ordinary passion. If you help me, say yes. yes. Control yourself now. Is your brain down here? Is anybody hearing my voice? Don't you have brain? Let your brain take charge. Not here, take charge. You know, and lack of, somebody say boundaries. Can I say boundaries? When you started the relationship, both of you agreed that you were Christians. This is where we stop. This is where we don't go over. This is how we communicate. This way. Why are you shifting the boundary now? Why don't you go through? You say you want to marry me. And we're going to the altar in six months. Will you die before six months? Why must I give you something that is special for six months? He says, see, I have to test it first. Uh, so, so I can know if I, if, I, if, if I should go ahead with it. So you test me. And when you finish this, I know, I know, okay. And then you move on. How do I recover the testing? Please explain to me now how I recover. You see, many girls in Nigeria are stupid. They deserve what they're going through. A young man tells you, you see, you see, if I don't test what I want to buy, how will I know whether it fits? Haven't you gone to supermarket before and boutique and all of that and test a shoe and finish? He said, no, I don't like her. You drop her. So when they test you like that, why are you complaining? Did they force you to test you? The young man said it was test. You say, okay, test. Haven't you tested granola before without buying? Why do you allow stupidity to rule your life? You see, even if you don't believe Bible, have wisdom. Even if you are not living by Bible standards, get common sense. Say no, no. What, what, how do I marry somebody that I don't know whether she can satisfy me and I can satisfy him? So if you try and the person didn't satisfy you, how, what next? How do we rewind? May your brain not be sawdust. Let's take the last one. I think I tire for you. You tire for me. So, are you still here? The last one is lack of generosity and high maintenance needs. Lack of generosity. One person is aradite hand. One person is high maintenance. We are both of them combined. Relationship must break. There are some young men to get anything from their hand. It takes 70 days fasting. Lord, open all Luchuku's hand. Mango to Kubo. Jantaha. Oh, Lord, oh, please. <laughs> That's the only way you can get anything from him. Now please look up here. If there's anybody like that in your life, I separate both of you now. You are not hearing. From the smell of mess, you know how shit go test. That person will not change. Anybody that is aradite and as a single for you, my dear, you and your children go swear to go swear to. I know a man. The wife came to my office crying. 
for 15 years of her working, every month, the man collects her whole salary. Every month. Not even, let me take away tight, the whole salary. Government takes tax, the man takes the rest. And then he gives her transport to office. Sometimes she say, can I buy ordinary change of slippers? And he will say no. She has to give account for pad and everything. Listen, I'm not joking. It may surprise you that the man I'm talking about was a pastor. The wife came to me. The wife told my wife. And they brought her to me. And uh, I said, what is it? She told me. I said, from today, say no. Let him go and walk. And bring the money. I thought it was enough. Before long, another of the pastors I know, the wife came here by herself, sat in my office. The same story. Please, what you agree to at the beginning of your marriage matters. When you are desperate to get married, you sell yourself away. Calm down. Walk with people that love you and people that you love. Let love be a journey of grace. Let God send you to your own home. All of this PPPPP to just get married so that people can say you're married. Married not be achievement. Now finally, are you with me? But when I'm talking about uh, all of this issue of lack of generosity, some girls take advantage of it. And every time they're making demand, making demand, making demand, making demand. When you become high maintenance, we should sell you. <laughs> Any car that you have that has become high maintenance, what do you do? You give it to Mbuka. Okay, what are the keys to a turnaround? The first key to turn around, to make sure that your relationship doesn't die, is self-awareness. Somebody say self-awareness. Self Sit down and look into the things we have talked about. Sit down and look into it. The second thing is attention and intentionality. Give attention to the relationship and be intentional about making it to work. Decide you don't want to lose the relationship and settle down to make it work. The third thing is teachability and commitment. Learn new things and commit yourself to practicing them. Learn and commit yourself to practicing them. The fourth one is prayerful brokenness. You are broken in prayer. You are repentant of your own failure. And you are interceding for your partner until God changes things. Where you failed in prayer, you are repentant. Most young people don't repent again. They think they can gross over anything and keep going. So they come to church and just do high five and, hey, hey, and they move on. They never can say to God, I'm sorry I failed. Anybody that stops repenting, God will start repositioning you. God will start using you. God will start taking you higher. You must learn repentance. It must be part of your nature. The Bible says, Godly sorrow, walk in repentance. Repentance is not remorse. Repentance is not you raise your hand. You say, God, I'm sorry. The one I remember, the one I don't remember. Forgive me or let's move. That's not repentance. Repentance is that you knelt before God and you looked into your life and you say, Lord, I messed up here. Lord, I missed it here. But I know you are plenteous in mercy. Give me another chance and give me grace not to fail you again. That's called repentance. Rise to your feet. Did you catch something? Yes, Lift your hands higher than your head. Your relationships will not die. Yes. Is this you 40? Yes. The way you are responding today, is it because I've not been with you for some weeks? Okay, from next week, I won't be with you again. Let's see if I'm going to lift your hand like you are one of us. 
Let me hear you say, Father. Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I receive new grace. I receive new grace. I receive new life. I receive new life. I receive help. I receive help. In my relationship. In my relationship. I will not fail. I will not fail. Open your mouth and speak to God. Lord, I receive grace. I receive help. I will not fail in my relationship. Makapa kano sone keli alaba. Ya kasa no niele keli ala kalawa. Meka na ba sala kachoto. Ye keli anaka la seli ala. Lord, I receive grace. Ye kana sa no kole seli alaba. Makala sholebo silba. Lord, I will not fail. Ye kese ni anaka alaba. In life, I will not fail. Ye sele kalapa na kasa. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. If you are here, you need to give your life to Jesus, or you need to return back to the Lord. Please, can you walk down to the altar? You were born again before you back. They come to the altar. All the movement stop. We are closing the service in a few minutes, so don't be in a hurry to move now. If you need to give your heart to Jesus, come to the altar. If you are born again before you back, say, come to the altar. I want to pray with you. And I want a new life to begin with you today. Every other person, lift up your hand. If you are here today, I want you to pray that God will give you a relationship that is life-giving. And any relationship that is death-dealing, God will remove it from you. Amen. Lift up your two hands. Say, my father. My father. Please just give me the life. Jesus, move fast. I'm waiting for you. Lift your hand higher than your head and shout, father. Father. I receive relationship. I receive relationship. That is life-giving. That is life-giving. Every relationship. Every relationship. That is death dealing. That is death dealing. Die. 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 Open your mouth and pray. I'm waiting for you to come to the altar. Young man, Jesus wants you to come and surrender your life. Young lady, Jesus wants you to return back to your first love. Move now. Move now. Carry your bag and Bible come and wait. In ministry, relationships that are life giving Amen. Amen. Can you lift your two hands to the king? Zatele kaparataha. The Lord bring the relationship that will take you to your next level. Everything bringing you down, go down in the name of Jesus. I separate you from evil relationship. Amen. As you live here, the weak is given to you. Amen. Go and succeed. Amen. It is done. Amen. Sit down. Did you catch it? Yes, Glory to God. Everyone that honors covenant and pays tithes, those who don't honor covenant and don't pay tithes, if as a young man or a young woman you can't pay tight now, what is your future going to be like? Come up from your chair right now to God's table and let's honor him with our tithes immediately. Move quickly. Those giving their offering, the account numbers are there for tithes for offering. You can transfer now. If you want to use your ATM card, go to right for you over there. Move as quickly as possible. Every other person package your offering and your tithes. Package your offering and lift it up with two hands. Lift it up with two hands. Amazing God, precious Father, I ask today that your hand of grace be upon your people. Lord, I ask that everyone receive help from above. The powers of lack be broken. Amazing favor come. In the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Say amen with emphasis. Amen. 
go ahead and give your tithes and your offerings. Don't forget from tomorrow, we are continuing our altar of mercy. Every one of you, put it on your status. Get your friends to be aware. Ask them to listen by radio, by Facebook, and all that. Is there anybody here that has friends in different parts of Nigeria? Ah? Huh? Ah? Huh? Don't just share this. Send to them. Call them. Get them involved. There are people who are more excited in sharing something of another church than that of their church. If you're one of those uh, very funny children, I'm asking you now. You know, one of those days, one of the students in class, the father came to visit in the hostel. And he acted as if he's not his father because he came with bicycle. I don't know. If I am that father for you coming with bicycle. But I believe that God has anointed me to raise you. Are you being raised here? Okay, so please advertise what God is doing. We thank God for the thousands that are connecting every night. We trust the Lord that more and more people will be connected in different channels in Jesus' name. But the one I want you to know is that Port Harcourt must hear us. So make the radio loud because we want to harvest the city. Our locations are growing and they will keep growing well. I can't hear your amen. amen. Different areas are having major overflows and we're trusting God for greater works. Glory to God. I thought I will hear your amen. amen. So every one of you, I want to see you advertising that. Now, by the next week, next month, 4th of, uh, of November, and uh, you have registered and gotten a G12 there. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Today is your first day in Gateway. Can I see your hand up? First day, first day, first day, first day, first day, first day. Where are they? Carry your bag and Bible. Come and shake my hand. Move fast. Be the first to get to me. Don't run, but be the first. Don't run, but be the first. I lay a hand of grace on you. The Lord lift you. The Lord command a special touch of grace. You are blessed. You are blessed. We are right there. Please come. Let me celebrate them. You are blessed. Why are you taller than me? Anybody taller than me is too tall. Though. This is the size that Jehovah recommended. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Celebrate them for me. God bless you. Any more? If you left your bag or anything, please carry it now. Service is ending. Okay. Lift your hands. I speak the blessing upon your life. Everything you expected, the Lord multiply result. Go and succeed. You are the best. Um, just a few announcements. Before we leave, please, we all know that the month of February is Papa's birthday. Amen? Amen. It's not too early to start planning. So we can give him something huge. Hallelujah. You can start going home. I'll drop it on the platform. Thank you very much. Have a lovely day.